The New York Jets are starting to get a lot of hype, but are they the real deal for 2022? Or are they still a season or two away from making an impact in a tough AFC? In this video, I'm breaking down game by game the schedule of the 2022 New York Jets, each matchup determining whether they will win or they will lose, giving you my thoughts, my analysis on their team and the best and worst matchups on the 2022 schedule. If that sounds good, don't forget to gronk, spike the like button, and subscribe to the channel for more BLV just like this. Hop in the comment section and let me know what the record will be for the New York J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets in 2022. Are you positive? Are you negative? Do you think they'll make the playoffs this year and take that huge jump? Do you think they're still the fourth best team in the AFC East? Or do you think they're a positive team that maybe won't win as many games this year but are headed in the right direction let me know in the comment section below and let's break down and predict some games jets fans it's time to predict your 2022 record here we go week one the baltimore ravens really tough week one the baltimore ravens you got john harbaugh fantastic coach lamar jackson an awesome quarterback it's going to be really difficult for you guys to defend Lamar Jackson and all he can do. But what I will say is thanks to your strength on the offensive and defensive lines, I don't think you're going to get pushed over or ran over by the Baltimore Ravens. And the Ravens are a very physical, tough team. They make their money on the line of scrimmage. So I think the Jets can hang in there, especially at home. But it's going to all come down to Zach Wilson and his ability to decipher and pick apart a Ravens complicated secondary and scheme that is very challenging for young quarterbacks. So ultimately, I'm going to take Baltimore. They're a playoff ready team. Got a good quarterback, good coach. They've got a lot of good players, especially on their secondary and strong offensive line this year. I, I think the Ravens are a good team and that's no shame in losing week one there to the Ravens. You play the Cleveland Browns. Now this one... I don't think the Char Deshaun Watson's going to be playing. So factoring that in, this game is in Cleveland. And Cleveland's a team that likes to run the ball, especially without Deshaun Watson. They're going to lean on that even more. I think the Jets are going to be a pretty strong team against the run thanks to their strength on the defensive line. Cleveland doesn't have a ton in the passing game, especially without Deshaun Watson if it's Jacoby Brissett. And then on the other side of the ball, you know, they got a decent defense, but not like a scary, complicated defense. I think the Jets, Zach Wilson can make some throws and some plays here. I think you guys can pull off that, if you would call it an upset with Jacoby Brissett. I think you guys can win that game for sure um, with no Deshaun Watson in the lineup. And then week three, you play the Cincinnati Bengals, which... <laughs> the Bengals aren't going to lose to you two years in a row, especially with how good they are. I think they remember that game from last year with the craziness of what happened there. So I don't think you're going to catch the Bengals napping this time. I think Joe Burrow and company come to play and I think they get that win. The Jets in Pittsburgh. I feel like if this was a game that was in New York, I would go with the Jets because I think these teams are fairly even in terms of talent. But when you factor in the tough environment that is Heinz Field, I think that's where I get swayed to Pittsburgh because the Jets are such a young team. I think you've got to go with the the grizzled coach in Mike Tomlin and the very tough defense in Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. Week five, you play the Miami Dolphins. I have the Jets winning that game, actually. I have them winning because I think you can rattle Tua if you can get to Tua, and I think the Jets can get to Tua. They still will have an offensive line that, yes, improved, but has some new pieces, has some growing chemistry, and with the Jets being able to rush a really good group of defenders I think they can cause some turnovers and put Zach Wilson in position to succeed in this game and I think they can win that game at home they play the Green Bay Packers I'm going with the Packers I think Robert Sala has a problem when he plays really good quarterbacks because I think his scheme is easy to decipher and playing an Aaron Rodgers even if there's pressure on him he's gonna make the throws and plays against your secondary uh, on the flip side the Packers defense is really good like entering this season, they got two new first round draft picks. They're already a very complete secondary. I think the Packers are going to give a lot of offenses trouble, especially at Lambeau. Lambeau is a tough place to play. Week seven, you play the Denver Broncos. You're playing Russell Wilson on the road in Mile High, another really tough place to play. I got to go with the Broncos there. Week eight, you play the Patriots. You play the Patriots twice, once in week eight, once in week 11 after the bye. I've got the Patriots sweeping you guys and 
my team is the Patriots. I'm going to be honest about this. The reason I do is not because of talent. I think the Jets can go toe to toe with New England, and I wouldn't even be surprised if these games are very close. But my thing with this is I think the coaching advantage is very big for the Patriots. I think the way that it happened last year, New England absolutely dominated you guys in the X's and O's and in the scheme. And I just think Belichick, it, he's going to coach circles around your coaching staff. I, that's just the way I see it. So un unless I see different, that's why I'm going to go with the Patriots winning both those games. Week nine, you play the Bills. I'm going with the Bills. They're like the best team in the AFC. Uh, Josh Allen's a freak of nature. So I'm going to go with the Bills. Week 12, I think you guys can beat Chicago. I mean, Chicago is not a very good team. Justin Fields is good, I guess, sort of has upside sort of but the jets are a much better team i think your pass rush wins this game i think your offensive line ability to protect zach wilson you guys are the more talented team you've got the better players i think you got the better quarterback too so i'm gonna go with the jets week 13 you play the minnesota vikings this one's interesting i'm gonna go with the minnesota vikings because it's in minnesota minnesota's really tough another really tough place to play for a young team this is loud this is a dome environment it's one of the loudest stadiums in the league and Kirk Cousins is a veteran quarterback. He wins these type of games. I'm going to go with the Vikings. Week 14, the Buffalo Bills again. I've got you getting swept by the Bills. I'm sorry, but you will beat the Dolphins. You will be one of your teams in divisions. Very tough division. The Bills are a really, really good team, especially in Buffalo at that time of the year. Then Detroit. I think you guys beat Detroit at home. I think it's a pretty even back and forth game. Both teams are very good on the line of scrimmage. I can see that going either way. But I have you beating Detroit. I think Zach Wilson outplays Jared Goff there. Week 16, you play Trevor Lawrence. Zach Wilson versus Trevor Lawrence, the number one pick versus the number two pick. I got the Jets again. I think they're the better team all around. I think they got. I think they can pressure Trevor Lawrence. I think that's the difference. I think the Jets can keep Zach Wilson clean while I feel like the Jets can pressure Trevor Lawrence and make him make mistakes. That's why they win that game. Week 17, you play the Seahawks. Seattle is a really tough place to play for uh, young quarterbacks. You know, that's really loud stadium. This will be a great test. It's also flying across country. I think the Jets kind of just fall asleep at the wheel for this game. I feel like it's late in the season. You're not making the playoffs. You're going across the country. I think the Seahawks find a way to win that game kind of for no reason other than the, the 12s are nuts. And then week 18, I got the Dolphins winning that game because I think it will be more important for them to take it. So I'm going to go with the Jets with a 5-12 and 12 record, but it's going to be a promising 5-12 and 12 record. I think the Jets are going to be a much improved team. I think Zach Wilson's going to improve. Uh, I just think they're young and they're, they're hungry, but they don't know what they don't know. And I think it's going to take time for them to grow. You know, I think Jets fans that are expecting them to make the playoffs, a bit unrealistic this year, given how tough their division is, given how tough the schedule is, given how tough the AFC is. They play a lot of good teams. They play the Ravens. They play the Browns. They play the Bengals. They play the Broncos, the Patriots, the Packers. Uh, this is a really difficult schedule the entire AFC East faces this year. So the Jets, they're going to have to see huge strides from Zach Wilson, huge strides from their team in order to be better than like six to seven, five wins. I think anywhere within four to seven wins is the range I see the Jets in. I have them with five. I could have squeaked six or seven. I thought about it, but ultimately I went with five. I felt like that was the best way to go, just given how tough the beginning of their schedule is and given how many tough games they play. So I think this is going to be a sort of a better than five and 12 at the end of the day, but that is ultimately the record for the Jets is five and 12. Let me know what you guys think. If you love it, if you hate it in the comment section below, it's Mitch. Thanks for watching. And I'm rooting for the Jets, honestly, even as a Patriots fan, I love Zach Wilson. I love their direction. I love their draft. So we'll see what they do and let's see if they can prove me wrong. It's Mitch. Thanks for watching. Peace.